You're listening to the Mountain Woman Radio Show, which can be found on our website at treyerwilderness.com and also on iTunes. Welcome to the Mountain Woman Radio Show, where we are homesteading traditionally 100% off-grid today and offering preparedness and survival tips for tomorrow. Here's your host, Tammy Treyer. Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today on Mountain Woman Radio. I know I always tell you it's a gorgeous day in Idaho, and the last two interviews I'm, I'm sharing that it's not. Today is actually rainy. It's bright. It is June 14th as we are recording this, and you know, it's really crazy. I've got a fire in my wood stove, and I'm wearing a sweatshirt. It's June, for goodness sakes. The beginning of the week, it was 99 degrees. What is going on? Welcome to Idaho. (laughs) But anyway, I'm sure that your weather is odd, too. It's been traveling across the country, so I hope you guys are all well. I hope your gardens are green, and I hope you're enjoying your summer And I am really, really excited today to share a very special guest. This is a friend of a friend and a new friend to me as well. I'm really excited, and I know that she will be a wealth of information to you folks. Her name is Peggy Lee Hansen. She is an author, a publisher, a ghostwriter, and a coach. And her mission is to help survivors of life changes to share their stories so that they can be a blessing to someone else who's going through the tough times and through the storm. And in talking to Peggy before our interview here, I know that she will be sharing such amazing information. So without further ado, Peggy, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Tammy, for having me. It is an honor and a pleasure to be here with you today, and I'm so excited. (laughs) Good, good. Me too, and it is a pleasure to have you on here as well. We have a lot in common. Peggy, as I mentioned, is a writer and an author, and I'm just going to give Peggy the floor here and let her share her story, how she got started with things, and and just a little bit about herself. So, Peggy, go ahead. It's all yours, girl. <laughs> ah, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Wow, you know, that's a loaded question. How did I get started? Boy, um, I could start, well, it was happened the day I was born, but that's almost like 60 years ago, so I don't think we want to quite go back that far. Um, however, um, you know, it's been, it's been quite a ride. It really has. And um, I've always been interested in writing, and I started writing my first uh, book, when I was like about 13, 14 years old. And it, it's a, it was a book that, boy, you know, it was an off-color book, and it wasn't one that you would want your mother to find that you had or even reading, much less writing. <laughs> and I'm not exactly sure what happened to that book, but I think I threw, tore it up and threw it away. Um, but, you know, I thought that was my first dabbling. But I have been writing poems for a long time, writing songs when I was younger, in high school, junior high, middle school time. So writing and reading has always been a part of my life. And But that kind of sets the tone on how I started writing and becoming an author, especially a published author. But what really got me to the writer point um, I guess, pun intended, perhaps, <laughs> that um, I was thrown in transition. And it was uh, a couple of different times in my life where I had experienced life as we know it. And it, it just kind of throws you for a loop, and you just don't know exactly how. And even though I journaled, um, a lot as a kid, I didn't do so much as an adult, mm-hmm. and I've 
I, I know now that was one important key perhaps to do, but yet if I had journaled back then, I don't know if I would have become the writer and the person that I am today. Maybe, maybe so. Maybe, maybe yes, maybe no. I don't know. But the, the couple of things that kind of threw me for a loop was back in 1991, I lost my mother-in-law. And she was my rock. She was more of a rock than my mother was. And and I say that with all my heart. I think that a lot of us have mothers that aren't quite um, what we expect them to be. And it's not through any fault of their own. It's just what we perceive them to be. And my mother always took care of us. She loved us. She fed us. She clothed us. She, you know, she took care of us. And but she just wasn't that warm, lovey person was. But when I met my mother in law, either was she. But yet she seemed to support me in different ways that my own mother hadn't. Right. And um, so when I lost her so suddenly, she died of a brain aneurysm. It really took me a long time to recover from that. My kids were little. My kids were 5, 8, and 11 Mm. or 10. And, um, you know, I could barely take care of them them because I was trying so hard to take care of myself. I didn't know how to do that after her loss. Mm. And it was a while that I went through that and... It's just kind of like in a fog, in a daze. And it affected my work. It affected my the way that I did things, um, my personality. I was kind of like grumbly all the time. I always seemed to have people. When I was, I was in the corporate world. I worked for Northwest Airlines uh, beginning in 1988. And that really kind of begins my story. Okay. Um, working with the airline. But each department that I was in, I seemed to have somebody that was gnawing at my neck, you know, a nemesis. Mm-hmm. And the, the person would just be there niggling at me. And she's like, why can't you just leave me alone and let me do my job? I just don't understand it. Mm-hmm. And why, you know, don't my coworkers stand up, you know, for me and help me out? Mm-hmm. And there was a lot of... Um, even though I didn't realize it at the time, it was like, you know, come on, you guys, you know, help me out here. You know, this person is is beating on me, you know, just, you know, help me, you know, do something. Mm-hmm. And I would get mad, basically, and just say, okay, forget you, you know, I'm not going to pay attention to you guys anymore. You're not helping me. I'm not going to go out with you, you know, when you want to go out, you know, and have a drink after work or whatever, you know, we're still friends, but. It's just like, why hang with you? you know? So it was a lot of, <laughs> you know, kind of like bad feelings. And um, and I didn't know quite how to work through that. Yeah. Well, it finally dawned on me at one point about, oh, probably a few years later. So my mother-in-law died in 1991. And it was about... Three years later, 1994-95, that something happened, and I realized that nobody could fix me. Nobody could change me. So how could I expect to change somebody else? Right. So with that thought, set me off into the best direction that I could have ever gone into, and it was an inner journey and finding out what I could do to make myself a better person. First of all, getting over the the, the grief, the sadness, the depression of losing my mother-in-law, who was just, you know, it, it tears to my eyes thinking of her, you know, being gone and how she died and how quickly, but... It also helped me to realize that other people around me don't make me who I am. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. I know who I am. Mm-hmm. And so all the research that I started to do uh, about everything, relationships, I think Pokey Roberts, Koki Roberts came out uh, back in the 1990s, and for those of you that are younger, Koki Roberts, well, she's still uh, is a news reporter today, but she's uh, been in the political world for how long, and she uh, wrote a book about the relationship between her and her mother, okay. and I thought, well, that's a good one for me to read, you know, to try to figure it out, and that really helped, so I started getting all these books about relationships and how to deal with grief and how to deal with your mother and how to deal with your sisters and just people generally around you. And um, it became a really big help. But what I even found even greater was the gift of gratitude. And I started a process that was based in gratitude, that I was thankful for having my mother-in-law. I was thankful for everything that my mother did for me. I was thankful for my nemesis that I had in each one of the departments Mm -hmm. because they were forcing me to learn more about myself and to become a better human being. And to this day, I, I thank the one, I thank God every day for that one nemesis, because without her, Mm -hmm. I would not be here where I'm at, and for everything that I do, and for the gratitude that I feel, and it's just an awesome, awesome experience Mm -hmm. to have. Yep, yep, awesome story, Uh, awesome, Peggy, that is just so true, so, so true, and I feel for you with your mother-in-law, because I, too, am blessed with an amazing mother-in-law. And, um, I have had the other side of that and it's, it's not a pleasant place to be. So I, I am so grateful for her and, and it's so funny because through the storms in our lives, if we're willing to look back and look at them the way you do, it's the same way I do is that, you know, everything happens for a reason. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. And you can't always make this stuff up as we often say, but (laughs) It is, it is what it is it's true. And, and you have to go through it. And if you can see the blessings in disguise, you know, those are the things that are your catalyst and that catapult you forward. And, and I too can say the same thing in situations that I'm so grateful for those poor experiences because they've made me who I am and the strong person that I am today. So it's, it's just it's a perspective that we have to have. And, and I think that you going through that process and, and, and journeying to find yourself was the same thing I did through my struggles. And it's something I think we all need to do because we really do need to realize that, you know, we are the ones that are ultimately in control of ourselves and our happiness. So that's Mm -hmm. such an awesome, Mm -hmm. awesome story. And that takes a Oh, well, thank you. You know, and, and when we, it takes us a long time to learn that, yeah. that, you know, we are, we really have the control over whether or not we're going to be happy. I started writing signs just like that, you know. Mm-hmm. Today, is a, today is a brand new day. I get to choose how I feel. Yep. And today I feel happy. Yep. I, I had that, I made that sign, I don't have, uh, you know, during one of those times, and I carried it from area to area with me whenever I was uh, promoted in the company because it just was such a great reminder for me that I get to choose how, how I am about all this. Yeah. And you know, the, the story continues. And, and when I started realizing that, good things started happening to me. Mm-hmm. I was still getting promoted, but I was getting promoted even quicker because of the attitude that I came about. Um, I, the, for the people that I started sticking up for, or, you know, sticking up for myself, you know, basically, but doing it, learning how to do that in in the right way, you know, the, the political, corporate side of things, you know, how to do it that way. And um, it was just amazing. And from that point... Um, 
it, it was just a phenomenal experience. And then comes the the latter part of the story of my story in corporate was when nine um, eleven came, you know, the, in the September attacks of, of two thousand one. And still working for the airline, I was working out of Minneapolis, St. Paul at the time, and I was an, uh, a technical analyst, and which means, meant that I helped technical writers who wrote the maintenance manuals uh, for the um, you know the maintenance on the to be done on the airplanes, and um, so I wasn't the pilot, I wasn't the flight attendant, I wasn't the ground office worker and but still you know I still remember that morning like it was yesterday yeah. and I heard on one of the uh, radio stations that a plane had gone through the Twin Towers and yet another plane had gone through in the tw- into the tw- other Twin Tower and it's just like what mm-hmm. and uh, the news quickly spread. Somebody had a little TV uh, that they turned on in their cubicle, and we watched the, the horror unfold. Mm. And, you know, I still remember seeing the live pictures of the um, smoke billowing out of the buildings, and oh my gosh, what a, mm. a devastating... We, we couldn't hardly believe what we were seeing. It was just mm. absolutely devastating. Yep. And... Um, it was, it was horrific. You know, nobody knew what even to say. We were um, sent home. We were, we were to finish off the day until, and so, and so, you know, everybody could figure out what was going to be happening. Mm-hmm. And um, we found out that one of our planes was missing, yeah. and uh, but we found out later that it was okay. Um, mm-hmm. So it was not a Northwest Airlines jet that was involved in any of the attacks. But for the next five days after that, it was so eerie. And some of your listeners might, you know, uh, recall this too, if, if they were around in that area, how quiet the skies were. There were no planes overhead. You didn't see any contrails, you know, going through the sky, yeah. no jet noise, nothing. Yeah. And it was just, we'd, we'd go to, we went to work a couple days afterwards, and it was, it was just, it was nothing. Yeah. You know, there was no noise. It was so quiet yeah. and so devastating. And nobody knew at that time what that all meant, you know. Uh, economic downturn happens. It's, it's cyclical. Yeah. It happens every few years, and every few years, corporations and different corporations go through And uh, by the year 2005, uh, the the big swing of the economic downturn was just kind of beginning. Mm -hmm. And we could see that there was some things that were happening. And uh, that was the year that Northwest Airlines um, brass had successfully ousted out the mechanics union and brought in scabs to train. Mm. And I was part of that initiative of getting those scabs trained in an undisclosed location. Mm. And, you know, to be part of something like that is so phenomenal. And you you do what you have to do because it's your job, but yet at the same time you think, Mm. you know, what's going to happen next? Nobody is safe in corporate. Right. And that's all I could think about is, like, they can say anything they want to, and, you know, you're gone the next day. It doesn't matter. Yep. And that was kind of setting on my mind for a, a couple more years. And um, I was promoted yet again into an, an, the training um, IT department for instructional design where I created online training modules for all the areas of the the airline, and that included the mechanics, the pilots, the flight attendants, uh, other IT personnel. Mm -hmm. And it was a job I absolutely loved. Mm -hmm. And But the the airlines were struggling, and so the merger started happening. 
and then all at once Delta and Northwest got into merger talks. And we thought it was going to be Northwest that overtook Delta and that it ended up being the other way around. Mm -hmm. So in 2009, I had learned that my job was not going to be going further into the Delta world. And which was, um, you know, kind of uh, um, like a double-edged sword in, you know, in some respects. It was good and bad. and But it was something that I hadn't really, didn't, did, had not, not prepared for. Because I was thinking about this for so many years that it kind of was in the back of my mind. And a few years before that, when I was 49 years old, I was 52 when I was given notice that I wasn't going to go forward with my corporate job. But three years before that, I don't know what ever possessed me, but I took out a piece of paper Mm -hmm. and I looked at it and I wrote down things that I wanted to be doing or not to be doing by the time I was age 55. Mm-hmm. And it was like things, not having to drive, you know, commute to work, mm-hmm. um, have maybe a profitable business where I could work out of the home, mm-hmm. having the, the time and the luxury Ooh. kids, you know, by that time. Yeah. And I thought, well, okay, well, that, that's a good list. But little did I know, you know, that was going to start jumping off the page right. <laughs> to come true. Not exactly how I intended it to come true, but nonetheless, it came true all on its own. So if you make a list of what you want to do, be a little bit more specific as to how, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. That's, that's funny because yeah. that's the thing, you know, sometimes it takes us to lose other things that we enjoy for us to end up where we are supposed to be. You know, it's it's all in God's hand and it's all in God's timing. But he obviously had a distinct mission for you because you are touching many lives with what you're doing right now. And that's what I uh, thank you for that. I really appreciate that. And that's exactly how it has ended up to be. And it's been a wonderful ride. And, you know, um, I had tried to say, I had to also try to figure out what I was going to do after the corporate world. I wasn't real sure how all was going to work out. Right. And I thought about what I'd like to do, what I was good at, and kind of go from there. And I know I'd, I really liked working with people. And while, while I was in um, the union portion of my corporate job there at Northwest Airlines, I had, I was the vice president of our association. So I had like 250 to 300 people that were, um, that were underneath me that, you know, whenever they had problems with their managers, they would come to me or somebody else, but we'd still have to figure out together, you know, how to, how to make things work, how to correct things, how to put things wrongs that were right. right. And I really enjoyed doing that. And I also got respect or gained the the respect of my peers that they could just come into my cube. They could dump all over me. I wouldn't be judgmental by any means. And they could just turn around and walk away and just feel so much better <laughs> just by knowing and trusting that I wasn't going to take that information anywhere. Right. It was just going to sit there, right. you know, and not go any further. So I really enjoyed that piece. So um, I looked for becoming a coach, and so I became a certified dream coach under Marsha Weeder. And right now she is, um, uh, she's been many things, but she's been all about dreams and about helping people make their dreams come true. And she had developed a 10-step process for that. And um, so I became certified under her, and she is through Dream University. And she just held a big event in California this last weekend. And um, she does 
phenomenal work, and she does deep work into the inner being so that people can let go of what they're holding onto inside so that you can be free to live your life and to live the dreams of your life. And one thing that I just, I just love the phrase that she says is that, you know, you have dreams for your life, but then your life has dreams for you. (laughs) And that is so very, very true. And if you're open to knowing what those are, it is the best experience to try to actually come to the realization what you're meant to be, be. You know, find your purpose. Yeah. You hear that so much. You know, you almost get to be sickening at some point. And, yeah, i got to find my purpose. What's my purpose? Yeah. You know, what's my special purpose? <laughs> but it's, it's really true. We, I truly believe to my core that we all have a reason for being here. I totally agree with you, Peggy. Totally agree with you. And it's funny because I went through that period in about 2007 where I was on a farm in Pennsylvania and ended up there uh, from an abusive marriage and was just seeking my purpose. And it was driving me crazy. You know, I just couldn't figure out what my purpose was and why I was on the earth and it is a very awing feeling when God brings everything full circle and totally shows you what you're meant to be and, and do. And, and I love what I'm doing today. I love being able to help people and educate people. And, and we all, you know, it's, it's all based on a passion, really. I think that, you know, our, our hearts often telling us what we need to do, but we don't listen. So it, you know, right. you had a very good point about listening. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's it's hard to to do that to come to that point to list to listen because it's hard for us to sit still and be quiet. Yeah. And but I think part of that because I know it was for me too is that it's really hard to be quiet and listen to what is being said in you know from your inner voices we don't want to hear everything that's being said but if you are can be brave enough and have the courage enough to sit and listen not well not only listen but to have a discussion with those inner voices and find out exactly what they're they're really telling you and that was one key point that Marsha Breeder did in her certification class that was the, the, the cream of the crop for me. And it's one area that I like to take my coaching clients through too, whether it's finding out what their dreams are or helping them write a book. But to get to that point where, okay, so your your inner self, you know, you hear that voice, it might be, it might be somebody else's voice that's very critical well, what makes you think that you can do that? What makes you think you can write a book and have somebody read it? Who's going to listen to you? What do you know? Yeah. You know, we all hear those voices. I know I sure did. Yeah. But what are you going to answer them back? And it's just like, yeah, I know. My mother tells me that, too. Or my dad does that to me. Or, yeah, I've got an older sister that just rakes on me all the time, too. But then yeah. take those voices and just... You know, have a conversation. Well, what does that matter to you, you know, if, if, if people will listen to me or who will read my work? Maybe I just need to do it for myself right now. It's for my own healing. Yep. And it's just as easy as that, making that conversation. That's an interesting way to look at it. I've never considered that. I've just always looked at it in the regard that, you know, um, to turn those negative voices around or where those negative voices are coming from kind of thing. Um, but that's an interesting perspective and I can see that being very helpful also. (laughs) Very awesome. Another thing to add to my, my, uh, arsenal. (laughs) <laughs> yes, it is. It's a little thing that you can put in your back pocket. It's a great little tool. Yeah. Have the conversation. Yeah. 
And it takes practice. It takes practice because you sometimes you just can't sit there and listen. You know, you're you're thinking about, oh, I got to load up the dishwasher, I got laundry to do, or I got my taxes to do, or checkbook to balance, or there's always something else. Yeah, and sometimes to do. Sometimes so we're that, our worst enemies too. We're we're the ones that kick ourselves mm-hmm. when we're way down. But we would never do that to a friend, you know, so we listen to those negative voices or we're creating those negative voices instead of being, you know, um, encouraging to ourselves. And that's something that has, you know, been something I've been really aware of. Somebody pointed it out that we need to be really careful about what we say to ourselves and, and how we treat ourselves. And that's a really valid point because sometimes we are our worst enemies. We're worse than the, all the other negative naysayers. And, you know, you just got to put those voices aside and be willing to be courageous. I think that's such a good word to use and, mm-hmm. and such a good way to embrace anything. What, like you said, whether it's writing a book or whether it's living off the grid or homesteading or whatever it is, you know, until you take that first step, you're not going to get any further ahead. So it's a learn, and it is truly, mm-hmm. truly, mm-hmm. like you said, a learning process. It's something that we all have to work our way through, whether it's early in our lives or later in our lives. But like you said, it's usually later. And that was the case for me too. So, but, and, and I think that's what makes us want to be a better advocate for others to help them so that they don't have to wait so long in their lives before they can embrace their dreams. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. And that's the reason why I wrote my second book, Thrown Into Transition. You know, now what do you do? Or now what do I do? My first book was 50-something, The Unknown Dream and Paths, and that was written for me. And I did that within the first nine months after being out of the corporate world. I found somebody that I could write a book with really fast, have it self-published, and just have it in my hot little hands, and I didn't care if anybody else read it. I had a copy of it, and it was my legacy that I could leave my kids, it could, I could leave the rest of my family. They could actually get a feel for what I did. I had my poetry in there. I had other little writings in there, and it talked about that first few months after leaving corporate, what that really did. The second book came into play just about six months later, as I went through the, the certification for the dream coaching, is that I knew I needed to find my own voice, and I needed to find my own way, and I needed to find my own signature process that I could talk about years to come to help other people learn how to how to cope with the transition with any change that they were doing, whether it was getting their pink slip or they were becoming an empty nester or maybe even, you know, uh, a young adult going off to college. There's just so many changes. We are changing from the day that we are conceived, yep. and we change every day yep. ever since. Yep. Yep. And, then, and we're not the same person we were five minutes ago. Right, right. And you never know who's going to influence that or who's going to cross your path, and you never know what's ahead. Mm-hmm. So it's it, that's what I, why I call it an adventure. <laughs> I do, too, and that's exactly what I sub-subtitled my books, is book one in my life adventure series, book two in my life adventure series, book three in my life adventure series. So I've got three books out there. The the books that I wrote were The 50-something, The Unknown Dreams and Paths, um, Thrown into Transition, Now What Do I Do?, and The Acceptance Factor, From Serenity to Beyond. And it all dealt with things that I was going through after leaving the corporate world. And the um, the third one, you know, the acceptance factor was ending relationships. And it was business relationships. But it was also those business relationships that had turned into friendships. And how do you how do you just let go of those? Mm-hmm. And it was anything, you know. So it was my own learning process. And they're not big books. You know, it takes you 30, 40 minutes to read them. They're short and powerful. You can find them all on Amazon under Peggy Lee Hansen. And from the author, they're all there. Okay. And, um, but, you know, it's just an amazing process. And 
as people found out that I was writing books and doing my own publishing with them through Amazon, even even so far as putting them on Kindle, they would come to me and they would say, so do you think you could do that for me? You know, can you put this on Create Space or can you can you put this one on Kindle? Do you, you know how to do that? You know, it was like sheepishly and it's just like, well, I've only did it once, but yeah, I suppose I can do it. <laughs> and that's how I became a publisher, an editor, a, you know, proofreader. I, I became certified as a business ghostwriter so I can help other people write their business books and write their own signature processes. Perhaps and being an instructional day designer, I can also, you know, put together a, a course or two, you know, that you can put together in a workbook or whatever. And, and so that's how my, my writing and publishing business came about. I started out writing books. I just wanted to write. <laughs> but I became something different. And that's where you just go with the flow because... Yeah. We're always evolving. I'm always evolving. I have no idea where I'm going to end up or where I'm going to land. And maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm not meant to. Maybe I'm just going to keep growing and growing and doing whatever. Right now, you know, I want to get a speaking career going as well. And um, so who knows? I'm open to possibility. And that's step three, by the way, of my process is be open to possibility. See the possibilities. That's awesome. That's so awesome. And, and like I said earlier, we're so much alike. It's just funny because we just roll with it out here in the wilderness. There's always stuff going on and you know what? It's the same everywhere else. There's stuff going on. And and like I said earlier, you can't always make the things up that are coming across your path. But when you see the opportunities that are there for you and um, funny that you said about the speaking, because that's something too, that I am interested in doing with, because of my current health issues, I really want to be an advocate and try to help other people. And something else that's really um, that you resonated to me is that everybody has a story. Uh, You know, our stories are different, but this kind of rolls into what we wanted to talk about um, upcoming here, too. And I want to before we get too much further, I want to mention you can find Peggy at Peggy Lee Hanson dot com. And it's P.E.G.G.Y.L.E.E. H A N S O N dot com. And you can also find her at, I'm sorry, courageous women publications dot biz for her publication um, business. And if you're interested in uh, writing your own book and you need help publishing it, she is the person to go to. But she has something really neat that we want that she wanted to touch on today. And I think that many of you this may pertain to. Because we all have a story. And Peggy, I'm going to let you share um, what you have to offer my audience. Okay, great. Thank you, Tammy, so much for that. What I am putting together, and if, if you've ever had an idea that just won't let you go, this is very similar to this. <laughs> and it's, it's just like uh, the, the publications business. And it's, it's not letting me go. Um, I, I think I want to get away with it, away from it every once in a while, you know, and concentrate on my own writing and concentrate on my speaking, but I keep getting pulled in. And there's a reason why I keep getting pulled in. It's because I can help so many people with, with my next, my next project that I'm going to be introducing to you here in just a little bit. And it's not only helping other people, but it's helping other people help other people. Mm -hmm. What better way to live a life than to help other people help other people? Yeah, Yeah, I just can't get much better than that. Mm -hmm. The initiative that I am putting together now is a book that will be published fully under my brand of Courageous Woman Publications. And the title of the book is Courage Under Siege. And the the subtitle is still in the works. I'm going to see what happens when I get all the stories, but it's going to be a book of individual stories of women who have survived 
job loss, who have survived cancer, who have survived living their last breath only to come back again to life. Mm. It is getting, uh, you know, surviving spousal abuse, having a child with a a disability or a handicap or uh, uh, autism, uh, attention deficit disorder, especially with depression, anything, anything that anyone has come out of the bowels of horrific, horrific circumstances only to survive and thrive and transcend to the other side. And so I'm looking for women and any men out there, too, who are listening and have a story to share, please, you're you're welcome as well. Um, I gear myself towards women, but men, as I say, are welcome too, um, so I don't want to count you out. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's for some, it's harder for women to share. It's harder for women to get up and to to talk about because we we feel like we have to keep everything inside, and that's not how it works. Mm-hmm. The only way to help other people is to share to share your stories. Someone is waiting to hear what you have to say. Yeah. In this book, the words will be your words. You will be able to share your experiences. You will be able to share the steps involved that you took to get yourself out of the muck and mire. Um, anything and everything that you that you can think of um, is is acceptable. So uh, this this book has. Um, shown me, shown itself to me several times. It has shown that it's going to be a yearly series. I don't know how many years for a series, but it's going to be at least two years running, if not three. could be more, but right now, all I see is three. And I say that because uh, it's, it's something that I have worked on for the last oh, six months to eight months or so with the idea and the concept and putting it all together. And I know in my heart of hearts, this book is waiting to be published and it's waiting for your words to be published. A lot of people think, too, that, you know, they want to write their own book. And a lot of people want to write their own book, but they find out how expensive it is to write their book. With a, a book that is multi-authored, a compilation book, otherwise known as an anthology, where you have many, many stories, it is um, a lot more cost-effective for the author. It gets the person started in their writing. They may never write anything ever again, but sometimes it's just enough to get you started and to write your own book. If that's something that you want, if it's not something that you want, that's fine too. But if you feel called during this moment, right here and right now, that you have a story to share, you have a story to tell, you have healing that you know that can help somebody else, then I really highly recommend and suggest for you to check out this book and to to be author it. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, I don't want to write a book. I don't, you know, I'm not a good writer. You don't have to be. I'll walk you through everything. And if you really don't want to write any words, I can interview you, spend an hour's time with you on the phone, ask you a series of questions, and I'll have it transcribed, and there you have it. You'll have your chapter done in an hour, and you don't even have to write it. (laughs) So um, any questions about this, Tammy, that you can think of that your audience might want to know? Well, if you are interested in this and you have a story to share... You can email Peggy by reaching out to her at Peggy Lee at Peggy Lee And again, Hanson is H A N S O N. 
You can also go to treyerwilderness.com slash courage and sign up now. So be sure to check that out. I'm really excited about this opportunity that Peggy has opened up for our audience. So again, it's treyerwilderness.com slash courage, C-O-U-R-A-G-E. And I highly encourage you to reach out to her. Like she said, this is something that you can either write yourself or she will gladly interview you. But oftentimes we have these stories that we need to share. And like she said, you know, there's somebody out there waiting to hear what you have to share. And it's just such an awesome thing to be able to be a light to somebody else. When we shared our video about my health journey, we have had the privilege to save 11 lives. And that is such an awesome feeling. And, you know, Peggy mentioned how it's, you know, such a good thing to be able to help people to help people. And, you know, that's what we're called to do. We are supposed to be help meets to everybody we come in contact with, you know, to be able to be a light, to be able to help other people. And I think this is just such a phenomenal way to do it because I know all of you have a story. So don't hesitate to reach out to her. And again, it's Peggy Lee at PeggyLeeHanson.com. Um, Peggy, the one thing that did, uh, question-wise, um, that did pop in my mind is um, the cost. Is there a cost involved for people to do this? Yes, there is. And it's a very minimal cost. And I say minimal because what you will get in return far out weighs the cost of the program. It's $197 to participate in the chapter. The chapter will be um, anywhere between uh, 2,500 and 3,000 words. Now, don't let that sound, you know, too much, but it's a hefty chapter. It's not like some of these anthologies that you contribute to where you pay $200 and you only get like 250 words, not 2,000 words. And uh, so it's going to be, it's going to be the meat of what you have to say. Also along with that, with that 197, as I said before, you will not be left alone to your own recognizances. I have weekly uh, calls, meetings set up so that if you have any questions, you know, I can help you through it. Whether you have questions, you know, if you have questions writing what you want to say or how to, how to put it, you know, we'll take care of all that. Um, also, uh, the ebook, it's going to be an ebook first that's going to get launched as of November 1st of 2016. And the reason I chose that date was because November 1st of 2016 is National Authors Day. And what better way how to debut your book and debut as a published author other than on National Authors Day? You know, woohoo! You know, that, that's just a fantastic <laughs> perk. And uh, I just think it's just so awesome. I love it. So we're going to be starting soon. I know, isn't that great? I just love that too. Yes. You know, it's just like, wow, that's, I started looking at the dates and it's just like, oh, wow, that is, that is just so cool to be able to do that and to be able to say that. Yes. It also, you know, so it's great. And, and I, it is also my intention that you will be also uh, helping to promote the book. So you tell your friends, your relatives, anybody on Facebook that you're in this book and it's soon going to come out and you want them to purchase the book on November 1st within a certain time period. And yes, that's how you get to be a best-selling author on Amazon. You make it a certain day, you put a certain time window. And for anybody else out there that, that um, likes to put a damper on that, saying that you're not a real, true uh, published author or, or um, uh, best-selling author, I say pooey on them. Absolutely. And I say that because you still put in the amount, you still put in a lot of effort, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears to make this book happen. Yeah. You have every right, as everybody else, to be named as a best-selling author. Absolutely. So, um, and that's my goal. That's what I want to see. And because the ebook is going to be come out and is going to be the bestseller 
in the number one category, whatever category it is that we choose to be, we can then put that on the, the bestseller status ribbon on the printed book, on the cover, so that when the print books come, that little emblem will be there. They'll say Amazon Kindle bestseller, mm-hmm. and the, the print books will have that on. So that's why I want to wait with the print books until after the ebook is out there. Shouldn't take that much longer, but with the print books, then along with the 197 fee to be part of the program, you will get five printed books. Five printed books to do whatever your little heart desires Mm -hmm. that you want to do with them. You can give them away. You can sell them for 10 bucks. You can sell them for $15 if you wish. You can do anything with them. And I'm going to have a little incentive Mm -hmm. so that when, um, if you sign up for the program, by July 10th that you will receive and pay in full. You have to pay in full. I do have a two-pay option to make it easier for some that, you know, can do 100 bucks a month for two months but not the 200 or, you know, the 197 in full. But if you pay in full by July 10th, you'll receive five more books. So you will get a total of 10 printed books awesome. that you can do anything that you want. So if you sell those 10 books for $10 each, then 10 times 10 is 100 bucks. You get 100 bucks off of your, your investment. Yeah. So your investment only brings it down to like $97. So $97, best selling author, well, yeah. You know, you get the status. Yep. You know, and then you have the the, the the physical book that you will have in hand where you can take it and you can make up your, you can create your own workshops with that book and say, here's my steps that I use, my process that I, that I created. You can uh, become a keynote speaker on that one chapter. You have a book in hand that will have your name listed as author. On that book. Such an awesome opportunity, Peggy. That's so cool. <laughs> I'm really excited about it. And I just, I, I, like I said, it won't let me go. So I'm not going to let it go. Yeah. And uh, it's just something that I feel that is right. But I also know how many stories are out there. I know how much my story has helped people. And I know how much their stories have helped me by their sharing. And we just got to talk to each other and, you know, and, and warm people's hearts yep. back up. That's so And true. you're not alone. No. That's so, so true. So, you know, so true. I, yeah, my mission is to, to, to let everybody know that you are not alone. You are, you are here. We are here together. We are going through this life together. We may have a little bit different circumstances, but yet we're here together, and all we need to do is just hold our hands together and, and help each other, help each other up. Yep, yep. That's so good. And I think this book is one way to do this. This is a good beginning. Agreed. Agreed. And what a mission. And we've all heard the chicken soup of the soul, right? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Look at those books. And I didn't even think about that when I first, when I, this idea first came into my head. So, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of anthology books out there. And of course, you know, the most famous one is Chicken Soup of the Soul, but there's always room for more. Oh, yeah. Oh, always yeah. room for more. Yeah. And when you have a story, like you said, that you can help promote, you know, and this could be an open door for many people out there like you and I who have the desire to share yeah. their story and make a difference, you know, this could be the open door, just like when Northwest uh, ended your job and the need for your job, it catapulted you. This could be you doing the same thing for somebody else. So this is an amazing opportunity, and I'm really, really excited for you and, and look forward to 
contributing as well. So I will be promoting this everywhere and helping you to get the word out. And um, everyone, if you are interested in checking out Peggy's books, a real quick link for those of you that are traveling, you can go to treyerwilderness.com slash Peggy Lee Hansen, and you will find all of her books that are available on Amazon. And um, I highly encourage you to check them out and check out her websites. There's another website if you're interested in checking out some of her earlier work. It's called Inspiration for Encouragement to Support You dot com. And again, all these links will be in the show notes and you can find Peggy Lee on all the social media avenues. And again, those will be in the show notes as well and in the description for those of you that are listening on YouTube. And Peggy, I really, really thank you for joining me today. And I wanted to open the floor up. We've run out of time, but I want to open the floor up one last time for you to give some other additional words of encouragement or um, anything else that you would like to share before we end the show. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Tammy, so much for this opportunity, and thank you for everyone who has listened today to this podcast. It has meant so much for myself, and I know for Tammy, and I know it will mean so much for many more involved with reading your words and hearing your words of wisdom in the book. One last thing for anybody out there that is in transition and can't really seem to get out of the funk Mm -hmm. or the depression or wherever you are, I have this that I want to leave you with today. Remember that you are okay, that you are alive, that you are loved, and you are held. It's but by no one but me. Thank you. Have a most wonderful day. Peggy, thank you again so very much. Those were amazing words to end the show. And everyone, heed her, heed her words. Those are very powerful words. And everyone, thank you so much for joining. Be sure to get in touch with Peggy. And till our next show, you guys take care. And God bless. You're listening to the Mountain Woman Radio Show, where you will learn something new every week. We hope you enjoyed the show and encourage you to join us at treyerwilderness.com. And be sure to connect with us on iTunes. Remember, your reviews on iTunes are very important to us and help us reach more people just like you. 